podcast. Let's have a look at a few of the unique strengths of Houdini in building this type of setup, this organic thingy growing. The principle behind it is copying geometry onto itself over and over again. Let me show you what I mean by in the OBJ context dropping down a geo node, diving in there and dropping down a sphere, which we will set to be a polygon with a rather low frequency of two. And the procedure I want to do over and over again is just scatter a few points on it. Maybe not so many, but say 24. Then use those to copy spheres onto those individual points. So again, drop down a sphere, which will set to be a polygon as well with a low frequency of two. And let's scale it down to say 0 0.1, which we're going to wire in here. So we got this. And as we've seen in a previous tutorial, to repeat this operation over and over again, we could, for example, use a for loop. However, in this case, I want to make an animation out of this and want those spheres to appear successively over time. And yes, you could animate a for loop's number of iterations. However, that would get pretty slow because for each new frame, the for loop would run its full iterations while it just needs one additional iteration. And in Houdini's geometry level in SOPS, there is a concept and a tool called the solver, which is doing exactly that, operating on a previous frame's geometry. So let's drop that down. The solver here, we're going to wire in our sphere in the first slot here. And let's just copy these three nodes here. Dive into the solver and you will see this, those five slots. You get direct links to your four inputs that you had on the solver node. So our geometry would come in here. Plus you're getting an additional node called previous frame, which enables you to access the geometry that we had on the previous frame in Houdini. And that's what we're going to use in this case. And to employ a proper technique, the first thing you want to do is drop down a switch and a switch just switches between its inputs that you wire in here, depending on a condition here. So when I highlight this, select input zero, it selects this node as an input and one selects input one. And as we're on this first frame and we do not have any previous frame on the first frame, we need to select input one, which we're going to do with a short expression. So we will check if our frame equals to one. And if it does so, this expression outputs one and thus switches to this here. And then on the second frame, it switches to the previous frame and keeps it there for the rest of the simulation. Okay, let's paste our three nodes that we copied and wire the switch into the scatter like so. So when we go up one level and toggle real time and hit play, you see this happening. This kind of moving spheres here. And that is because on the first frame, we copied those spheres onto our initial first sphere. And then we are using this geometry here to scatter a few other points. So they over time move outward a bit because all those points will be scattered on the geometry that's been there in the previous frame, which for example, in frame 22, the next frame, the points would be scattered onto this geometry. What if we don't like this kind of moving thing and we'd like to keep the previous geometry from the previous frame and add this to it? Well, let's head into the solver and drop down a merge. So we're going to merge the geometry we're creating with the one that's coming in to our solver from the previous frame here with a switch and then highlight this here as our output. Again, go up one level, make sure the solver is highlighted, real-time toggle is checked and hit play. And now you can see this growing motion here. That's already looking pretty neat. One thing I would like to change, however, is to go back into the solver and for each solver iteration, so each frame, I want to change the seat that's in the scatter node here. So the global seat here. And to change this seat per frame, I'm just going to drop down an expression $FF for the frame number, the current frame number. So the seat changes over the run of the simulation. Again, go up one level, hit play. Okay, not too much difference, but we're getting there. And we could perfectly leave it at that if we like this kind of spherical look here. However, to make this more organic, let's kind of fuse all those spheres together and maybe smooth them a bit. And the easiest way to do that is to use a VDB. And a VDB is a volumetric representation of a geometry. If you want to learn more about VDBs and in general volume techniques, we have a nice premium course on that. But for now, let's just drop down a VDB from polygons. And we wire the solver into that and highlight it. And immediately you see this really coarsely resolved volume here. So let's increase the resolution by decreasing the voxel size to say 0 0.025. Takes a bit longer to calculate, but yields this higher resolution volume here. Let's smooth this using the smooth SDF node that comes with the VDB toolkit here. So wire this in here, highlight it. And yeah, the default settings look kind of fine. You could increase the iterations or the filter voxel radius in order to blur this even more. Let's convert this back into a polygonal mesh for rendering using a convert VDB node, which we'll wire in here, highlight and set it to convert to polygons. 
like so. So this results in this really high-res polygonal mesh. And if you don't want these meshes as high resolution, you could increase the adaptivity a bit, so Houdini tries to poly-reduce this. However, sometimes with animation, this introduces a bit of flickering, so we just leave it at zero, because honestly, this is not that extremely high-res. And before rendering, I still want to smooth this surface a bit to get rid of any jitters coming from normal errors using an attribute blur which by default is set to blur the individual points positions. So if we wire this in here, highlight it, and maybe set the blurring iterations to four again, this smooths out the whole mesh a bit more. Let's reset this, hit play. And you see, it's not that fast because, well, let's actually benchmark what is the slow thing here. So let's reset that. Also, let's reset the simulation so this isn't cached anymore. And let's go to the performance monitor here and hit record. And now let's play this simulation again. And after we stop this, and maybe we stop this here as well, you can now see this colorful highlight here, telling me which nodes are the slowest in my setup. And that's definitely the VDB from Polygons and then the VDB Smooth SDF. So this VDB workflow here slows us down a bit. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.